This video starts the series which looks at links between Nyquist diagrams and closed loop behaviours and stability. So far then, we've demonstrated how to sketch Nyquist diagrams, but next the focus is on the relevance of these for feedback loop analysis and design. And we're going to begin by doing some trial and error investigations in order to demonstrate the strong link between closed loop stability and an Iquist diagram. Once the viewer has seen for themselves that there is indeed a strong link, then they'll be more motivated to ask questions why. And that's what later videos will do. So a reminder, when we were plotting the Nyquist diagrams, what we did is we plotted the Nyquist diagrams of GM. So you'll see M the compensator, G the system. I'm not discussing more involved loops for now. That could be covered later. The key thing is we did not do the Nyquist diagram of the closed loop transfer function GM over 1 plus GM. We're doing the Nyquist diagram of just GM. And you must remember that. And it's good because it means that the impact of the compensator M on the Nyquist diagram is simple because we've just got multiplication here. So what we're going to do now is go straight to the illustration. We're going to take a transfer function. Here it is, G. And we're going to try a few different compensators, 1, 3, and 5. We're going to plot the Nyquist diagrams for each of these and the associated closed loop step responses. Now what you'll notice, we'll put it up here first, you know what you're looking for. So when k equals 1, the Nyquist diagram is well away from minus 1, and the response is good. When k equals 2, the Nyquist diagram goes through minus 1, and the response is oscillatory. And when k equals 5, the diagram goes around minus 1, and the response is unstable. So let's go to MATLAB now and we'll demonstrate the use of CISO tool. So if I can find it in amongst all of these different windows, there's one of them. And then I should be able to find the others down here. There's one, and there's the other. So here's CISO tool, and you'll notice I've entered my G already. So just to talk you through what we've got here, here in the top left, we've got the root loci. Here in the top right, we've got the Nyquist diagram. Here in the bottom right, we've got the closed loop step response. And here in the bottom left, we've got the compensator, which currently is 1. So you'll see for the current value of compensator, you can see from the root low side, the closed loop poles are in the left half plane. That's these pink blobs. The response is stable, but oscillatory. And the Nyquist diagram you'll see here is not too close to the minus one point. I can zoom if you want to. Um, well, that's about as much zoom as it's going to let me. So what I'm going to do now is reduce C and see what effect that has, reduce the compensator. So if I put in 0 0.5, what do you notice? You see the compensated Nyquist diagram, this magenta curve, is clearly smaller than the uncompensated because I've multiplied by half. So I've moved further away from this red cross and this red cross is minus one. If you look at the closed loop step response, you'll see it's not quite so oscillatory. The overshoot's not quite so big. So let's, um, what you've got to do now is you've got to watch all of these three plots as I change the compensator. You'll see as I increase this value here in this box, you'll see the poles start moving to the right half plane. You'll see the Nyquist diagram clearly gets bigger. And as it gets bigger, and gets closer to this red cross, watch what happens to this step response. So we do 0.5 to 0.6, you see a slight move, a bit more oscillation, closer to minus 1. Go to 0.7, gets bigger, a bit more oscillation. 0.8, closer to minus 1. Nyquist diagram is gradually getting bigger and closer to minus 1, but you'll see the step response is gradually getting more oscillatory. Go to 1. OK, we now have got the same as the uncompensated, 1.1. And again, you'll see it's still moving closer to minus 1, and the closed loop response is getting more oscillatory. 1.2. And you see the change in scale on the step response axis because the oscillation is getting much more marked. Let's jump straight to 1.5. And now what can you see? You can see a very oscillatory response. 
the Nyquist diagram is getting very close to minus 1. And if you look at the top left, you'll see the closed loop poles are getting quite close to the right half plane. Let's jump to 1.8. Lots and lots of oscillation now. Closed loop poles almost in the right half plane. Let's drop to 2. So I jump to 2. And what do you see now? We've got permanent oscillation. And if you look in the top right hand plot, you'll see the Nyquist diagram has now gone through the minus 1 point, And you've got poles on the imaginary axis. And now if I go beyond 2, you see the poles have gone into the right half plane. We've got unstable behavior. And in particular, you'll see the Nyquist diagram has passed to the other side of the minus 1 point. Now, I can look at this from a slightly different angle. So what I can do is I can overlay the responses for a few specific values of uh, gain. And you'll see all of them together. Now, if you look at this top uh, left plot here, it is a bit busy. But what you'll notice, k equals 0 0.2. In fact, let me just do the Nyquist diagram underneath. And then you'll see everything together. OK, so let's move that. So this tells you the values of k we've used. So k equals 0 0.2. You've got this blue plot, smooth, good settling time. That's nice. k equals 0 0.5. You've got this green plot, a bit of overshoot, um, a bit of oscillation. And look down here at the Nyquist diagram. If I do my zoom, um, in fact, I need to use this command here just so you can focus a bit better. So you see the blue plot well away from minus 1, the green plot a bit closer, some oscillation. K equals 1, the red plot, quite a lot closer to minus 1. What do you see with the red step response? A lot more oscillation. K equals 2, this one here goes through minus 1. And what do you see here? Oscillation. K equals 3, goes around minus 1. And what do you see? Instability. OK, so there's the summary. What have you seen? As the Nyquist diagram gets closer to the minus 1 point, you'll see the corresponding step response gets more oscillatory. And as you go around to the minus 1 point, you go unstable. And we've also seen that that's what you expected from the root locus. As you increase k, two of your poles, um, and we can mark them here, you'll see your poles are going like this. OK, so clearly, as you increase k, your poles get more oscillatory and eventually go unstable. Now, what we're going to do is do two further examples just to demonstrate that this insight was not by chance. Which one do we want? Where is it? That one. OK. So if we go up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a different G. There it is. And then I'm going to go to my CISO tool, and I'm going to import it. So I put G in there. And then I need to go down here, and let's put K back to 1. And finally, let's put up my responses. OK, so here's a totally different system. And what you'll see is we're going to get similar insights. So if I reduce C down to 0 0.5, what do you notice? A nice, smooth, closed-loop step response. You see the Nyquist diagram well away from minus 1. Closed-loop pulse, stable. As I increase k, what do you notice? Getting closer to minus 1, more oscillation. Increase k a bit more. Closer to minus 1, more oscillation. Go to 2. What do we see? Closer to minus 1, lots more oscillation. Go to 3, and now we've gone around minus 1, and we've got basically instability. And again, we can demonstrate the uh, other plots on that, so you can see. So if we do this one, and we do this one, this basically puts them all together, so you can see the uh, overlaying all the responses. So you see, as the Nyquist diagram gets bigger and bigger, so we see we're going blue, green, red, 
light blue, magenta, yellow, and you look at the corresponding closed loop step responses. If it's well away from minus one, smooth, no problem. As you get closer to minus one, the green begins to overshoot, the red overshoots a bit more, this light blue overshoots and oscillates a lot more but still settles and once you go around the minus one point with this magenta you're beginning to go unstable. Now we have got one other example, one last example just to demonstrate that this is not a freak you'll see it happens in many cases so if I go back again to my CISO tool because that's quite good for seeing these patterns and I import the new value of G I've just entered. Okay, and let's go back to one. Okay, so you'll see with this system, with one, we're already very close to the minus one point. And what do you see in this response down here? A lot of oscillation straight away. If I take that down to something like 0.2, it moves the plot well away from minus one and what do you see happens to your response? It's a lot nicer. If I go up to something like two then what do you see? I'm going around minus one and my poles are moved into the right half plane and I've got instability. So what's the summary? If the Nyquist diagram passes with minus one well to the left then we tend to get good performance. If the Nyquist passes with minus one to the right, we got closed loop instability. And if the Nyquist was close to minus one, we got oscillation. So there seems to be a strong connection between the Nyquist diagram and closed loop stability. If you're far away from the minus one point, and in particular with the minus one to the left, you tend to be getting good behavior. If you're near to the minus one point, you tend to get oscillation. And if you're on the wrong side, we seem to be getting instability. Now this link is unsurprising. And why is it unsurprising? Because the closed loop pole polynomial, or closed loop poles can be defined like this, one plus gm equals zero. So clearly, closed loop poles are defined by gm equals minus one. And that's why this minus one point is so significant. It's where you solve the closed loop poles. So in other words, if the Nyquist diagram goes through minus one, then it means you have solved this equation. G of j omega times m of j, j omega equals minus one. Because the Nyquist diagram, remember, you've just substituted j omega into g of s and m of s. And what this tells you is j of omega must be a closed loop pole, which means you've got a closed loop pole on the imaginary axis, and you are going to have oscillation. Now, just to re-emphasize the point here, we're doing the Bode and the Nyquist of the loop transfer function, which in our case with these simple loops is just gm. And the reason for that is if you find the closed loop transfer function, which is gm over 1 plus gm, then the closed loop poles are given by gm equals minus 1. Okay, so although the closed loop pole polynomial is 1 plus gm, we're actually just going to plot gm, but what it means is the minus one point is really significant. So some conclusions. All the roots of the closed loop poles must be in the left half plane. Actually, we're not going to worry too much about where the open loop poles are. If the Nyquist diagram passes through minus one, then that means we can solve m, g of j omega, m of g, j omega equals minus one for some omega, which means that j omega must be a closed loop pole. And what's the inference from this? If the Nyquist diagram is close to minus one, then a closed loop pole must be close to the imaginary axis, which is going to imply slow or oscillatory behavior, or perhaps even unstable behavior. So clearly, close to minus one, if, if your Nyquist diagram is close to minus one, then this is you. You are very unhappy because you're expecting to get bad behavior. So in the next few videos, I'm going to seek to give simple explanation behind these observations. But the most important thing is you can see it's easy to use. You look at your Nyquist diagram, close to the minus one, bad, far away from minus one, 
probably good.